Despite being a pure bodybuilder, I've always found strength cool. As humans, it would seem natural for us to gravitate towards the highest expression of man-made power production, as it represents one of the many aspects of human potential that lays dormant in all of us, but can be awakened with time and effort. Out of every expression of brown out there, grip strength has always been the one with the strongest draw on me. There is something primal and evident about developing the ability to destroy things with a simple squeeze of the fingers. Being able to hang onto something for a long time also resonates as evidently necessary from a survival standpoint. Although the chances of a life or death situation that involves you hanging off a cliff is close to null in our modern society. It should be no surprise then that grip strength would be so widely represented as a desirable attribute to possess in most fighting mangas. If you interpret shonens as power fantasies, most of the traits that will be depicted within the pages of the stories will include characteristics that will resonate strongly with an audience of young adults who wish for nothing more than to cultivate these capacities within themselves. The most well-known grip monster in all of shonen is of course Anayama Kaoru from Grapple Baki. If you've watched the Morso Manga episode I made about him, you should be very familiar with this character. With the ability to tear apart car tires and literally rip chunks of flesh directly off his opponent's bodies, it's safe to say that he possesses an amount of forearm and hand power that far surpasses that of normal humans, even very powerful strongman competitors. On a less dramatic note, we also have Rihito the Reaper from Kengan Ashura. His area of expertise is more focalized around finger strength, with less of an overall gripping ability. This specialization of sorts allows him to cut through the body of his opponents, using his digits as knives. The question I'll be answering in this video is the following. Can you build superhuman grip strength like Anayama or Rito in real life? I'm going to be using these two figures to discuss the different types of training styles you need to apply to your grip to develop it fully. The issue with Anayama and Rito is that they never had to train to develop their strength. They were born with it. The good news is that the results of their genetic gifts, while widely blown out of proportion, are still human features. Therefore, they can also be developed in you and I. Let me state right now that besides developing your strength, training your grip will also grow your forearms, although it isn't as directly correlated as most people think. You see, there are different types of grip, each one offering its own specific stimulus to the lower arm region. If you only do one and not the others, you'll be left with an incomplete development. The first type is support grip, which is the one that most everybody does, sometimes in excess. The idea behind it is simple. You grab onto something and you try to keep at it for as long as you can. Eventually, the muscles of the forearms and hands give up and the weight slips. Most people work their grip that way doing deadlifts, rows and pull-ups. Although I'm going to say right now that focusing 100% of your efforts on it is not the best way to do so. When you're doing a deadlift or a row, you're mostly targeting the musculature of the upper back and posterior chain. Therefore, letting a smaller muscle group like that of the forearms act as a limiting factor is not a good idea. Worst yet, you might also find that this practice makes it very difficult to track grip fatigue, which sometimes results in under-recovery and less gains. As a whole, depending only on heavy pulls for your forearm and grip gains is not going to be a smart choice in the long run. It will be only if you don't really care about maximizing grip strength or forearm size and just want to get as much muscular damage done as fast as possible, in which case this video isn't for you. I'm also going to encourage you to use straps when doing your heavy deadlifts, rows and shrugs. That way you will be preserving your grip strength for the much needed forearm activities that this training plan will have you doing. It doesn't mean that you can't grip the bar on your warm-up sets or for a certain lift, but overall, you will find that saving your energy for movements that are dedicated to the grip slash forearm will be more efficient in terms of progression. The main idea behind support grip is that grabbing onto something and struggling to stop it from slipping away will develop your ability to do so for a longer time or with heavier weights. The growth component comes from the fact that the fibers of the forearms are being stretched by the load, experiencing muscle damage. Even though you need to make sure not to overdo it, this is of course a primordial trait to develop for one simple reason. It will have carryover to every other type of grip strength there are. Remember, the limiting factor of grip in most cases is not your forearms, it's your hands. So to be able to push the hypertrophic limits of those forearms, you're going to have to strengthen that support grip using different types of lifts. The most obvious candidates are going to be deadlifts, rack pulls, shrugs and rows, Although I've explained earlier that because these lifts allow you to move a lot of weight, they will be better suited for developing the muscles of the back. 
It doesn't mean that you can't use them strictly for grip work, but if that's the case, I encourage you to pick either shrugs or above the knee rack pose, and in the case of the latter, to do it full time. Most support grip work will be trained in that fashion. Instead of reps, you will be holding the weight for a certain amount of time before letting it go. I also advise you to not do all of your support grip work using barbells, and to vary the joint angles when using one. For example, you can try this con grip exercise, which resembles a suitcase carry. You will find that doing this movement will really overload the grip, while not letting anything but the muscles of the forearm limit the length of time during which you can hang onto that barbell. Do them for 3 to 4 sets of 15 seconds for each arm. When you can easily hold it for that long, add 5 pounds to the bar. Another implement switch would be to use towels. You can just slip it inside a plate and deadlift it from the floor before holding for time. You will also find that doing them this way helps modify the angle of the wrist and involves the fingers to a much greater extent, which is another aspect of grip training that is underdeveloped in most people, but that is absolutely key for greater gains. To make sure that you also develop the entire musculature of the forearms and brachioradialis, you will want to include elbow and wrist flexions. These are dynamic movements that will challenge your grip's ability to hold onto a moving object. They still constitute variations of support grip, but unlike something like a pull-up, where the body moves in space with the grip as a support, here you are going to be tasked with actively grabbing and re-grabbing onto that bar to be able to continue the work on the forearms. The difference with a row is that in this case, you're using muscles that are much smaller and weaker than that of the back, which means that the grip won't be the limiting factor anymore, and that your ability to hold the implement and use the muscles of the arms to move it will stay extremely close in terms of capabilities. In the same vein, understand that there are a multitude of support grip variations, and that they are all beneficial for developing your grip and forearm via weighted stretch. Pull-ups and dead hangs will offer a great degree of vertical tension on the muscle. Rows and shrugs will test your ability to hold onto that bar while it moves into space. Reverse curls and wrist curls will develop the ability of the arm to leverage against weights. Rack pulls and towel holds will challenge how long you're able to struggle against the static weight while being pulled down by gravity, etc. etc. Bottom line is, these variations of support grip are all beneficial and should all be applied to some degree or another in your training, as they will make up the majority of your forearm and hand work. Do not let yourself get pigeonholed into some dogmatic mindset and focus on only one of these movements. Anyone who tells you that deadlifts are all you need for grip strength and forearm development is a patented idiot. The second type is pinch grip, or the ability to hold something in between the thumb and another finger. Unlike support grip where they are preventing the implement from slipping away, here the fingers are directly tasked with applying force to the object. This means that any gripping action that decreases the surface area of contact between the palm and the implement and increases that of the fingers is going to train your pinch grip. This can mean using something that will force your hand in a more open position, pushing the object to be gripped away from the center of the hand and close to the tips of the fingers. This also forces more of the fingers to be in contact with the bar. By increasing the diameter of the item, you also lose the ability to secure the grip by locking your thumb on the other fingers, increasing the demands on the grip. A good example of a movement that will force the fingers to handle the weight more directly is the finger curl, a variation of the wrist curl. Not only does this variation challenge your hands, they also procure a strong pulling sensation for the forearms, due to the wrist flexion occurring at the peak of the weighted stretch. However, since the finger never closes around the bar before returning to the center of the palm, this cannot be considered a pinch grip variation. However, it definitely helps strengthening support grip altogether. Thick bars are universally acclaimed for their ability to strengthen pinch grip by spreading apart finger positioning and opening up the hand, making gripping it more difficult. You can artificially replicate one by using fat grips. These can also be used to do shrugs, pull-ups, rows, and even reverse or wrist curls. Understand, however, that by increasing the demands on the grip, you are reducing your ability to move weight and damaging the development of the muscles that should normally be targeted by such a movement. The use of a towel is also going to skew most movements applied to it towards the pinch grip side of the spectrum, seeing as how using one gives the fingers more freedom to be involved via surface area friction. Besides these, there are a plethora of implements that specialize in pinch grip. If you go to a rock climbing gym, you will find a gazillion boards that will let you work on that finger strength, seeing as how essential it is to their sport. Loading pins are also going to be incredibly precious for pinch grip, seeing as how you can attach an infinity of implements to them, and progressively overload with ease. 
Overall, there is a lot of material out there for you to build your grip with. But buying them all isn't only unnecessary, it's also counterproductive. You want to focus on a few key movements, each for their different types of grip, and push progression on them. No need to do every single one. The third type is crush grip. I know you might not like this, but this is the least important one of the three, because it offers no way to stretch for the forearms. This doesn't mean that it's completely useless for size or strength, but it has much less carryover than the other two. Crush grip is really its own thing, and you will quickly find out that the ability to squeeze some poor dude's hands into a pulp doesn't necessarily correlate to much, besides being a prick. However, this is also a blessing. Considering the amount of time that you'll have to spend on training your support and pinch grips, being able to go easy on the crushing variations is a good thing. And when it comes to training this ability, nothing beats grippers, unless you live on a recycling plant and have access to an infinite amount of soda cans. I personally recommend Captains of Crushers, although other brands can certainly work just as well. Development with these is fairly simple. Start with the easiest difficulty and build your way up. Train with them 3 to 4 times a week with 4 to 8 sets of 4 to 15 reps. Once you can easily get 10 reps every single time, go up in resistance. As for support and pinch grip, I recommend attacking them at least 4 times a week to varying degrees of intensity. Low frequency is the enemy of form development. So if you want to build them to the point of looking like an anime character, you're going to have to put in the work week in and week out. Don't do one big session that leaves your grip fried for 5 days. Instead, spare your efforts and stimulate it with different movements every time you get the chance, and focus on pushing progression. Since the forearms and hands are such small muscle groups, you will notice that they lack work capacity and ability to handle volume, but they recover fast. This means that they are extremely well suited to being worked in supersets. And since grabbing onto something isn't taxing at all for the cardiovascular system or overall muscle structure of the body, you are left with a lot of choices as to where to put these forearm movements in your program. You have no excuses to not build that anayama grip. All there is to it is to do it. In lieu of goodbye words, I'm going to leave you with three last pieces of advice when it comes to grip training. One, don't use a mixed or hook grip when doing the exercises detailed in this video. 2. Doing finger push-ups can be a fun way to strengthen them, but it won't build your forearms. And 3. Farmer's works are a great way to develop your grip and forearms while at the same time building up your yoke. Give them a try if you can. If you need more info on these, check the channel's playlists. That'll be it for this anime workouts video. Hope you learned something from me today, and I wish you the best of luck developing a monster grip and building those giant forearms.